Tapançam dolu mermi de seven böyle eder mi? İnsan sevduğu yeri de bırakıp da gider mi? Adam sevduğu yeri de bırakıp da gider mi? Tapançam dolu saçma ve kaçma sevdüğüm kaçma. Zaten ben yaralıyım da bir yara da sen aşma. Zaten ben yaralıyım da bir yara da sen aşma. Tabancamın sapini ta gülatın atacağım Alacağım çıkarı de seni çatlatacağım Alacağım çıkarı de seni çatlatacağım Thank you. This was a little the beginning part actually of my new movie, One Million Steps. It's not finished yet, we're still working really hard on it. I've been doing a lot of steps for you just now, also in the movie. And they are poetic steps, creative steps. I don't move from A to B, I just stay in A and really have fun there. And when I look at what happens when I'm tap dancing, I realize the sound is what you hear, what actually communicates the rhythm and the music. But all my activity, it's, it happens in between the sounds, in between the beats, in the silence. All my impulses, my movements, it happens before in the silence. And it was funny, but when I started uh, tap dancing, I didn't know this, I was fixated on the beat, really doing it, putting the sound there. And when I realized it happens in the silence, this was a real breakthrough for me to learn that you throw the beat in front of you and then it happens there. We all take a lot of steps in our lives and someone actually took the trouble to count them and came to this incredible number of 1,825,000 steps in a year for every, every average human, uh, human being. So you all do this, really well done. And um, <laughs> big steps, small steps, you don't really give them much thought, they just take you from, from A to B where you need to go. And uh, when you do them, when you're walking, your body automatically falls in a rhythm, a pulse. And this saves you energy and makes that you can go a long way without having to think about every step. I don't really have to take care or think about what I'm doing right now. But something happens when you start playing with the silences and the breaks, the pauses in between your steps. <laughs> Suddenly this very normal thing of walking, it becomes music and rhythm. And for me, tap dancing, in this way, it becomes walking poetry. You take the breaks, the silences, you make them very small or very large. And this is how you get this playful mode. And somehow underneath is still the pulse. But because I'm playing with these pauses and stopping sometimes, and then I riff on this pulse of normality, it becomes playful and actually generates a lot of ideas. So this was a thing that I'm, I was intrigued by, silence, pause, and how it becomes poetry. And I was intrigued together with my friend Eva Stotz from Berlin, a filmmaker, and we thought, wouldn't it be great to put these poetically walking feet, to confront them with functionally walking feet in a big city just to see what happens when they meet, you know, these two modes 
Can they inspire each other? Maybe the poetic feet can bring something loose in the functionally hasty walking steps of the normal life. So we went to Istanbul because we thought intuitively this is a great place. A lot of things are happening there. Let's, move, let's do it there. And this would become the movie One Million Steps. Something incredible happened though. The second time we were in Istanbul to film was in June 2013. And I don't know if you remember, but Istanbul exploded at that moment. Thousands of people stopped their daily lives, their daily routines, and went into the streets and just said, no, not any longer. We need to create a break, a pause, because this machine of, of the city, of the government, is just rolling too fast and it's, it's breaking us. And the, the incredible energy that happened there, we were in the middle of it, is very intense. All these people just, they couldn't go on. And what they did was very symbolic and, and beautiful to me. They built a barricade around Taksim Square. And Taksim, by the way, means improvisation, so it was strangely fitting. Around Taksim Square, where is Gezi Park, and this was the park that was threatened. This was in the, uh, yeah, the issue that kind of made everything explode. So they, they uh, cordoned off this space. And inside was a, a safe space, a, a space outside of normality and functionality. And their life was different. They were not busy with making 10 points for a new political program or... Uh, choosing a leader that would speak for everyone. No, they were using this space as a silence, as a pause. And there was music, dancing, and, but more importantly, or most importantly, so I shouldn't say music is not important, most importantly, people were talking and generating seeds for new ideas because it was a place outside of normality, outside of functionality. I would like to show you a fragment of of the film we filmed in Gezi Park. It was one of the most intense moments for me on the barricades. So one side is protesters, the other side is police. And we are in the middle making music.
Thank you. Such an incredible. I always go back to this moment when I see the movie of this part. Silence, pause, poetry. It's what happened in Gezi Park. It's what's happening in my feet. And with this talk, I would like to inspire you how to do this at home. This was the, the theme, <laughs> how to do it at home. I saw you in your kitchen tables, like making pauses and breaks. But it's uh, what, how to do it. I think the only thing I want to say about that, because it's different for every person, is the attention that you can put on the silence, on the break. It's not just relaxing, putting on your television and doing nothing. It's actually a very powerful, full moment when you are allowed to be outside of functional um, steps. And the only thing I want to like make a case for is to use these moments and value them. Play, make music, make poetry of your steps. <laughs>